G'day, he's all going. This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru. Today, I want to do a beautiful, simple exercise for you beginners out there. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful and simple because it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be simple. Now, what I've got in my pocket here, I found a picture on a coaster. I was given this coaster by a friend, Angel Jackson. She gave me a big box of gifts anyway. But anyway... I found this image on the coaster there and I thought it's going to be my reference picture. Now in this video, see how we've got a sky, then we've got the ocean, then the rock, then the foreground, then the tree. They're the different layers. So when you're doing a painting from a reference picture, it always pays if you haven't done it to start doing it and if you have done it, well good on you. Now. You look at the layers, what's the first, the second, and the third, and so on until you get to the end of what to paint. So you're painting a layer, then the next subject's got to be over it. You don't want to be painting around it if you can help it, because it just makes for a better, sharper quality picture. Now also, what I want to say is when you're using a reference picture, try not to look at it and get it exactly, 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 because that can always trip you up and you're sort of not understanding exactly what's in the picture and if you're trying to put that shape there you don't know what it is it sort of looks a bit crooked i've done it in my past so what i want to say to you in this tutorial is use it solely as a reference so as an example this has the sky i'm going to paint my sky into the picture. I'm going to paint my way of the water, the tree, and the foreground, and so on, okay? All right, first off, we'll just exp I'm going to use a canvas board. That is the size of the canvas board right there, right now. Can you see that? And going up just here will be a list of colours of the paints that I'm going to use for this painting as well, okay? So they're just going up to the side of the screen there like that. Look at them all go. Okay, that's that sorted. And I'm going to use the brushes I feel comfortable with. So I'm going to use my two inch blending brush to do my blending. And I'm going to use my putter on a brush, my applicating brush, which is just another two inch brush. I'm quite happy and I love using my hog bristle fan brush. You might have other brushes, filberts or flathead brushes or whatever. Use what you're comfortable with. I'm not a brush guru, so I don't know that much about brushes, but I know how to use the brush that I've got in my hand. Anyway. So in the first part, we're going to use some retarder and my white flow paint, okay? So I'll get my water bottle, which is here. And my canvas is dry, okay? Look at that. And a lot of you have said, we don't care how long your videos are, Ian. All right, well, here's a testament. Let's see how many views this gets, because I'm going to dribble on, carry on, and dance along and paint along in this video. And we'll just see how many of you hungry subscribers keep up to your wishes with telling me you don't care how long my videos are, all right? And I told you that for nothing anyway. So, we're going to start with my canvas board. It's one that I made myself, just canvas paper. All right, now, I'll show you what I mean by canvas paper. I get a canvas pad. This is a pad because it's got lots of pages in it, like a paper book, which you call a pad, okay? So that's what, so I'm, I'm saying this because some people don't know what a canvas pad is on the other side of the globe. You might have different names. You might understand what I mean when you find out your right word. But anyway, I buy a canvas pad and it is an A3 size, okay? A4 is half the size. But this is a decent size for me to do my tutorials on, all right? Now what I do, there's 10 in here. Oh, is it 10 or 20? Oh, 10 of them. So I've got 10 canvases in here, okay? And I get myself a big stock sheet from the sign writing suppliers. It's about two and a half meters by one and a half meters. And I can cut out about 22 of these canvases, okay? So I buy two of these pads and a, a big sheet of that stuff which cost me about 35 Australian dollars and I go to the trouble of cutting it all out and using the glue to glue them all on and then I make a big pile of my own canvases okay so this canvas pad I'll even tell you it's acid free 
acrylic gesso primed so they're already got the gesso primed on there okay so this is the canvas I'm using I'll just show you up there what it says all right acid free acrylic gesso primed and the 280 GSM and there's 10 sheets in there okay right so that's my canvases out the way a lot of people are asking me questions that have been asked before but they are newcomers they're stepping on board they're subscribing which is good stuff so I've got to keep answering these questions for all the newcomers as well okay so that's why this video is going to go on for a bit start from scratch I'm going to show you everything so I have my gesso primed canvas board that's how it was bought from the shop now I'm going to show you exactly how I treat it and condition it before I'm actually getting my colored painting on there okay so let's come down to the palette here now I've got me phalo blue but I want to start off I've got me flowable white paint coming out of the tube there look at that it flows out like wet cream all right and I've got my clear medium retarder. So I'll put a puddle of that there as well, okay? Just about that much. I'm gonna get some over there for the phalo blue as well. All right? Now, I'm gonna spray me canvas first. So I've got my spray bottle just with water in it out of the tap, okay? So I wanna spray that. Okay, that's been sprayed. Because the canvas has a lot of little potholes in there, all right? so. Now that's wet, it's got the gesso on it, so that water, if I put too much on it, it can drip, okay? Where now, I'm gonna load up my two inch applicating brush that I'm gonna apply that white on there with. So I've got the white and mixing it on the with the brush into the two inch brush, the white flowable paint. Because this white paint has got a thinner body to it and it flows over all those little lumps and bumps on the canvas, okay? So I'm just loading it up like that it's a big two inch brush it's going to get the job done really quick all right now this will because that's wet this is going to move across the canvas a lot easier than just a dry raw chalky canvas okay so virtually that white flow paint really has water and retarder medium in there retarder is a medium it's not a medium quality like medium light or heavy it's a medium now I'm getting this white flow paint all over my canvas dab it on there and then brush the brush strokes out okay beautiful now that's ready to take on my colors and it's ready in a way that I can blend them and stretch them and merge them like a, a wet oil look all right hey everybody yamaha just wanted to say hi and the reason i follow ian harris tutorials is because he taught me how to paint like this thanks ian bye all right back on the canvas i've cleaned that brush that i put the white on now i'm going to pick up the i'm going to use phalo blue with retarder okay so we're going to mix that together into my brush. Okay, so we've got the white with retarder, flowable white with retarder, and we've got the blue with retarder. Now I want to do sort of long X's from the top, like so, and bring it down to my horizon line somewhere. So if anything, it'll be dark at the top. So this is getting it on in a less effortless way. See, I've got it all on there, and we've got scratchy brush strokes in it. Let's get that top done. But there's scratchy brush strokes in it, right? You can see those brush strokes. So this is where I'm going to blend. It's a different sky I want. As you see, there's our sky. We want a, we want a full coloured sky with clouds. We don't want a broken up coloured sky. 
So I'm going to put that brush down and I'm grabbing my two inch blending brush. Now, with blending, it's all up and down like you're stamping. See, I can go like this, but it'll take too long. Dab like this and it's getting those brush strokes out, okay? But what I do, I, I'm also twisting and dabbing on as well. It makes that process a bit quicker. So I'm getting all this sky. So we've virtually got dark at the top and coming down to a lighter tone to where our horizon line is going to be. All right? See, so I'm twisting, turning the brush, and I'm on and off. Don't just twist in one spot. Twist and turn. You're creating elements into the colors there that just look artistic and beautiful. So down here, see how easy that was? That's effortless. And it's so great. You, you teach yourself new tricks. You know how I learned this effortless bit just now? I just did it as I did it right here on this video today. It's the first time I've done it this way. You can look back in all my other videos. I've never done a sky like this. I just realized this is going to work. And because it's going to work, I can tell it's going to work because I know the paint has different behaviors. So I knew the paint would behave in a way. So instead of me crisscrossing it all on and then trying to blend everywhere, now see, there's my sky, okay? It's sort of light and dark. And also I want to I want to get some lighter values down the bottom here. So those two brushes that I've just used, which was my blending and my applicating one, I'm gonna grab some more white in this now, okay? Just that white we had the retarder mixed in. I'm just putting that on there. And we'll bring this up. Well, hang on a minute, that's not doing what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to get more on there. I'll stamp it on. This is why sometimes I've stamped paint on to my colours. See, the, the white is staying there. Because I want the bottom bit lighter into the atmosphere. All right. And I'll get the water colour there as well, because this is going to have water in it, obviously. Very light water. I might get a bit of blue in it. If we do have an horizon line somewhere there. That'll do for me water. Now I want to blend this white back up into there. Just so the bottom value is lighter and it's got that horizon glare to it. Okay? It's very, it's not a noticeable change that I've done, but it's there. It's in the picture and to me it needs to be in the picture, okay? Because then we'll put some simple clouds into this sky. You can make this as simple or as detailed as you want. So I'm using that reference picture and see, you wipe your brush on a paper towel or rag as you're blending and because I've gone and put white into that blue, some real brush hair strokes and that's why I keep dabbing that to get them out. See, they're gone. They're gone. Okay. All right, that's good enough. I can tickle this until the cows come home, but that'll do me all right. Hey Reese and Ian, this is Tammy Sharp from USA, Ohio. I know that I did my last one wrong, so for everybody that is not paying attention, he'll get on you. You got to make sure you're doing it this way. Um, I'm on my way to a painting class. Watch Ian's videos, they're great, and his bloopers are even more funny. So I'm going to go because I need to pull out of here and... Good on ya! All right, so far we've got all that procedure done with two simple brushes, all right? Now, if I can just push you people back a bit because you're a bit close. Now, we're going to do our clouds. So now we've used that white flow paint. Now I'm going to use a good quality structured white, which is titanium white. So I'm just going to knife this out of the bottle Okay, see that, that's, that's not like that flowing paint, that's, that's like putty virtually, it's a good quality white paint. 
So I'll put that over there somewhere. See, when I use my knives, I just drop them back into the water, water bottle or the water tub there. And when I'm ready to use it again, a quick shake and a quick wipe on a rag or your paper towel, and it's, it's, it's clean again. That's what I do. That's just a habit I do with my knives. Now we're gonna pick up that white. I love using my hog bristle. You can use a filbert brush and do the same thing. You'll get a different shape. I just love using my hog bristle fan brush for my clouds. Now we'll come down here and I'll show you how I load this up. Now, this is dry. That's just straight out of the tube or straight out of the bottle, okay? There's no retarder in it. I'm going to get the edges done onto the paint and I'm slowly coming up the bristles, okay? I'm not just smashing it in there because I don't want it being all globby on the canvas. So I'm loading that side up like that. There's none on this side. See, it's that far and I'm slowly bringing it up the bristles. That's what I'm doing. I'm slowly bringing it up, up the bristles, okay? So that brush is loaded with no glugs in there. That's what I want, all right? Now their picture there, they've got their sky and they've got their clouds there. So we'll probably do a couple up here like this, then some down on the horizon line. Just We're not gonna copy those clouds exact, okay? So we'll probably do, um, I, I like crisscrossing mine up like so. And I always line it off, okay? I'll just gently put that down. Grab my blending brush. And like I've told you before, halfway down, I'm blending down, coming a bit closer. You can see the line I've scratched in there for the handle of my brush. I'm gonna blend that down, okay? So you could just start your brush and then start making contact lightly. See how lightly I just had to touch that and it's already starting to move this acrylic paint because all that paint's got retarder in it, okay? So see that? It's very lightly dabbing and twisting. Now you've got to wipe the brush. Come down, twisting. Wipe your brush. Use all different corners and edges of the brush you're blending with. I do anyway. I don't want to do too heavy and make that too washed up and mudded there. I want it to sort of have its own even thickness of blending and characters of those colours in the cloud. Now see there, that's not finished because if anything, this is blended and that is not. So what you do, you just lightly come up there and tickle those top bits. Like in oils, they, they wash it up. But we, I don't do it in this because you'll destroy it. It's not oil paint, this is acrylic paint. So there's one cloud, okay? Now after you've done a cloud, your brush is dirty. The simplest way to clean it, down here, I've got, I've got two water tubs. One to wash it, come up the side of your tub like this, get all the bulk of the paint off, okay? And I've got like another one here that I, see this second one, the water's hardly getting dirty. And then you wipe it in a rag, okay? That's clean, ready to go again without any contamination of the blue. Okay, we're gonna put another cloud here. So we'll sort of come off the picture crisscrossing it around until you think you're running out and come across there, okay? I can whack that back in that tub of water because it's going to be washed for the next cloud and then I'm going to blend again. So I'm going to blend from the middle down, sort of tickle that edge up a bit, wipe your brush. Practice and practice your clouds. Don't try and do a picture straight away if you haven't done one like this. Practice these clouds on some scrap canvas or good paper that'll work and practice them. And when you feel you're happy with what you're getting, then you'll know what clouds you've adopted into your, you can put into your paintings, okay? So there we go, into the atmosphere there. 
Now I've got to tickle the top of that. It's a bit harsh. So I'm going to just come here, tickle it up just the littlest bits. Just so it's soft. All right. And then they've got a few laying down the bottom now. Now that's looking okay, but this one's looking like it's a bit up there like that, okay? So my next cloud will probably just come in front of that just to hide that bit. Do something there. Getting it just a bit over there. That'll do it. Pop him back in the water and blend. Now all this cloud paint has no retarder in it. It's just got that hog bristle brush that's been a bit damp. We can come right off the painting there with that bit. It's always good to come off the painting. Get rid of those little... And see, that's just practicing your blending. Okay. Now we'll do a bit more here to bring it down into the atmosphere and that'll be our cloud. All right, so the top, what I'm putting on now, I want to keep the top and blend the bottom down. So I'm creating the top of the cloud with my fan brush. I'm just sort of making a top of cloud thing. I'm not worried about what's happening here. That'll do. Let's grab my blending brush, come over a bit closer. And we're going to keep the top of that and blend all this down into the atmosphere. Very lightly, on and off, twisting, dabbing on and off, wiping your brush. So you don't want to bring all that down into the atmosphere. Okay, because our water line's coming up somewhere about here. So that'll, that sky's pretty much done. You can keep going on and on and on with that, but you don't need to. Okay, and we've got a pretty fluffy, reasonable sky. Right, our sky's finished. If you want to, you can just put some, load your fan brush up again and put some highlights just indicating what clouds going back and forth from each other, what's in front and what's behind. This stuff, it sort of brings, sits things forward and backwards of each other, doing all this sort of stuff, what I'm doing now. Just tipping on some little highlights here and there. That's pretty much it. You don't wanna, you can get carried away doing this as well, I do. All right, that's it. That's our sky, simple. If you feel some of them have been too heavy, clean that fan brush and just lightly dab them down, blend them down to get rid of that. Just so the very top of it's pure white. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you this in case you have done them a bit too thick. You can dab them down, but you've left that harsh whiteness there. It's just that bit of glare there somewhere, okay? You're just sort of sitting them down. Because it's important to have the lights where they need to go. And when you get the lights and darks in their right spot, it makes a painting look like a painting. before this uh, retarder dries. So I've got this thinner two inch brush, all right? It's a plasticky hair on it. And I'm getting the, the phalo blue, it's still got the retarder in it. And I want to create my horizon line with this. Okay. And because this 
paint that I'm painting into has still got retarder in it. Hopefully it hasn't dried off too much. I lose a lot of time with recording, unfortunately. At home you can do it quicker. We're gonna bring this forward. This is our water. I want light and dark bands through this water, okay? Just like that. Keep them straight, of course. Okay, I'm gonna put that brush down. I'm grabbing my blending brush, okay? But first, look at it, it's dirty, I better clean it. Okay, I've just washed that and banged it. Now I wanna blend this. Let's get some long blending strokes. And if you feel your blending's a bit chalky and gone a bit too dry, I'll, I'll do just a little bit. Get your water bottle. Spray that a little bit. Wipe that blending brush because you've just put a lot of paint on it. And it'll drag a lot better. The water with this acrylic. Look at that, see? There's our water. All right, I'm pretty much done all the bits we need to do for blending. There's more detail you can go on with if you wanted to put lighter values up here or some moon or a bit of a sun, whatever. But I'm just keeping this basic for a simple... Now look at the difference, there's a difference. Mine doesn't look anything like that picture, but I'm using this as the reference, okay? That's what I'm doing, all right? So you'll notice this painting is picking up my style of cloud. It's where an artist's signatures come from. Their skies would always look like their skies and their trees and so on and so on. Now, because we have the luxury of working with acrylic, we can dry this now, because we don't have to do no more blending, and get on to the next section, okay? All right, that's dry. As dry as I'm ever gonna need to get it, because now we've gotta put a couple of rocks in the water here I'll just show you what we're going to do so they've got two rocks here in the water so I'm not going to copy those rocks I'll put them in that spot but I'll just do them with the see how they've got light and dark values in each rock and this one has sort of an, an opening going right through it so I'm going to do that but they're not going to be exact to that to those two rocks but well, there'll be rocks there so let's find some colours there, which will be a good Van Dyke Brown is normally a good rock colour. So I'm going to grab some Van Dyke, oh that's a hard one, I, I'm having trouble finding this paint in the shops, no one's stopping it. Van Dyke Brown, now my Van Dyke Brown is very old and thick, so I'm going to have to spray some water in it and give it a bit of a mix up. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. So you buy a good quality paint, what's this one? Matisse. Alright, so I've got my. So with my rocks, I'll probably have a Van Dyke brown for the darker values and the yellow oxide. The yellow oxide. So I'll put some yellow oxide down here as well. And obviously some white, which we have. Now we're doing a small object here, so obviously we're going to need a smaller brush. Okay, I'm going to pick up my flathead brush and we'll get some of the Van Dyke Brown on there. This even could have been Payne's Grey. We'll see how one goes first with Van Dyke Brown. I've got some water there in case I want it to flow off my brush a bit easier. Now we virtually, they're pretty close to the horizon line, so there's one about here. It's going to have an opening in it the way theirs is, which is there, and then the rest of the rock, which is there. Then I can colour it in. This is the darker values in the rock. So just keeping the edges reasonably rocky and sharp. You don't want them all feathered and broken, making it look a bit 
less of a quality of a rock. So we got one there. We better kiss it to the water. Okay, something like that. And now we'll get the other one going. The other one is pretty much... And come here. See, the, that's why I put the water, watch now, I put water into that paint, it's flowing better. See what it did just then? It flowed a lot better off the brush. Now you want these points to be pointy so they look like it's going to be in the water. You don't want them to be too rounded and... See like this edge here, I want to really tease that out a bit, put a bit of a tail on it if anything like that, okay? So I've got something to put some whitewash against. So that's just the, the rocks. Okay, I've got the Van Dyke Brown. I've mixed up a little bit of yellow oxide and some white. I don't want it too bright though, otherwise it starts looking a bit cheap and cartoony. So now this brush here is the one I painted the rocks in, okay? This larger flat chisel brush. So now I'm going to go and use the smaller one to put the highlights on. So we'll get this brush loaded up with some of this. And you can see we've got sort of a tunnel there. So we want to put these lights roughly where it is on that one there. So I'm going to sort of copy the, the lights a bit. Just scratch them in, nothing... Nothing too detailed, just to create rocks in front of rocks. Just something out there. You don't need much paint for this at all. That's all virtually going to come around there. A bit on the front face here. Something like that. And then I'll, I'm just going to wipe that brush on my towel, pick up some of the yellow oxide. This is a very, I'm not sure if this colour is going to help or hinder it. I'll just see, I'm just trying it here. Get some of that in there. Just so it's not too boring. Okay, there's our rocks. Now see where it's finishing into the brown. If you want, you clean the hell out of that brush, right? Just wipe and wipe and wipe it and wipe it and wipe it. And if you can, you could probably merge these colours so they sort of fade. This is if you want to go to that trouble. Look at that. See what it's doing? Keep that sharp edge there and go again on this side. Blend. So it sort of gave a smoother, smoother tone to it. See what it done there? I've let this dry too much to do it here, but I'll try and do it a bit more. What I can do is probably dampen the brush a bit. And it might, yeah, well it's too damp. Dampen the brush a bit and it'll help you move it. There we go. And now what I might do is to give it some black now. That's good enough for the rocks, okay? Okay, I'm just getting a bit of carbon black onto my brush here, and we'll just sort of ease in some black bits from where the water is going to be, okay? Because you want shadows in everything. It gives it that bit more realism. Bits up here, and pretty much along the bottom.
bottom here. Keep these bottoms very straight where the water's going to go. Because we, we'll put a bit of white wash splash there. I mean, these are, these are distance rocks. They don't have to be too detailed. But I'm just giving you some examples of what you can do. We'll get a bit up here. Tail that out with the black. There. And maybe some in here. Not too much. Bit up here. How's that looking? Okay. Now that black, I'm wiping the brush because I feel I've, I'm just going to blend them a bit. Those ones there, they were too heavy and stark. So I'm just blending them out a bit. Okay. That one's not so bad. This one here is a bit. I can bring back that lighter colour if I need be. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just bring a bit of that lighter colour back. <clears throat> just so as you'll know, all right, we'll get that back in there. That'll do. That's pretty much our rock out in the water there. We can put a bit of a highlight on it. Uh, we'll get a bit of white. I should have everything on my small palette. Uh, we'll work out, I don't know, we'll add some sort of, not too much. Just probably there like that. Is that doing the job? Now I just want to sink these rocks back into the water so we'll put a bit of a whitewash where the black is just like so it's just some water washing around there. And if you want to, probably somewhere in the water you might want to... I'll get off the, br off the knife for you. Get some of this in the water. And maybe a I don't know if it needs it on the horizon line, we'll put a bit there anyway. Just some water out there, it's just like breaking water and that's cool. Because where these rocks are, there would in reality there would be reefs under there and when you have reefs in the ocean, that's what creates breaking waves. Sometimes it's good to understand things that you do paint. Look at that big ugly mess there. We'll drag that a bit. Okay, that's a breaking wave there. Now we're ready for the foreground. Yeah, we'll put the foreground in so what I'll do is I'll blow dry those white bits so I don't mess them up and um, then we'll do a basic foreground then our tree and she'll be finished so you can see the difference what I'm talking about I'm using this reference picture but as you can see it's not exact to the picture okay it is going to be different so don't get caught into the trap of when copying a reference off a reference to try and do it to a T. The only time you really want to get things exact is if it's a portrait, okay? Or a certain object. But other than that, just remember, 
if your painting's on a wall or on display somewhere, it is never next to the reference picture where people are going, oh my God, that's not nothing like the picture. That's not how it is. Where in your mind, you're subconsciously thinking that's probably what is how it's going to be judged. But just remember, just reference off your picture for the layouts and colors and whatever and subjects. So I'm gonna dry this now. And this is the sort of time I um, have a coffee and that, but my son's not here. I've got biscuits over there. And I'd like you to paint along with me. So this is just for you early beginners. I mean, you latest beginners that have just jumped on board and following me on my channel. The way I like you to do it, or the best way to do it, is watch the entire video. Then you can see exactly what's happening, what you're going to need, and how things are done. Then, when you've got the time and you set yourself up, you've got your palette, your easel, your canvas, canvas paper, stretch canvas, whatever it is, then you can go back to the beginning of the video and you can play it and pause it and paint along with me. Or you can even do groups, get your friends together, your art friends, and I've got a, all my videos are in the one playlist. Work out what your favorite subject is. There's a lot of hints and tips videos in there as well, all right? So don't be too shy to check out my playlist. Now, like I said, we're gonna dry this, all right? So I'm gonna get my hair dry. And, um... Oh, sorry, I've gotta do this one. Sorry, sorry! All right, I've dried this, but my paper towel's running out, so I've just gotta change the towel roll before I go any further. Someone was asking how do I change my towel roll. Well, if you're watching, you get to see how I do it. I can't remember who it was, but I've got a few tools located at the back of my easel there, just with all these sorts of things. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver. And this is my, like that, that rolls real easy, but I've got a paper clip here that jams the brake on it. It's pretty good. Now, I've got some um, carbon black, and I've got a, a thinner two inch brush that's more forceful to put the foreground on. So this is, I could probably put a bit of water in this to help it spread, not too much. You don't want it too opaque. All right, so we'll, we'll get some, Where's that reference picture gone? There it is there. So it's pretty much straight across the way they've got it. About here somewhere. Something like that. It doesn't have to be straight. Because the best thing you can do is block it in black. Block it in with the black. I'll get all that in there. See, it's still a bit thick and draggy, so I'll get a bit more water on there. And plus, when you've got water on it, it will dry quicker as well. Because this is just to give the darker values. I want to get a, I'm just going to get a, like a, a one inch brush and probably stamp in something here because I might want a bit of a bush there just on the edge here so it's creating that bush there have they got anything on that side? they haven't but I might put one there just something over here just an, another indication of some bushes here there there just something like that that'll do so here's our reference. So I'm blocking in all this dark to get the darker values, all right? But I'm seeing I want some sort of shrub here, and there might be one about here somewhere behind the tree. So I'm gonna I've got to imagine where the top of it'll be. And over this side there's a bit of shrubbery there. And maybe some more here. Now this has to be blow dried, okay? So I'm gonna wash these brushes out and blow dry all this. I'll just get that. There we go. Just neaten it up a bit. Have a bit of pride in your work. Oh, 
Okay, the good thing about acrylics, once again, we can dry our work and get on with the next step. So there's obviously a rocky surface in the middle here with some greenery growing onto it. So I'll start off with the Van Dyke Brown and scratch it roughly. I might use a different knife actually, that one's no good. I'll use a pointier knife. So, let's get a rocky area bleeding out into there. So that's our rocky area. All this black has been dried, okay? Now I'm going to just wipe that knife. Now that paint I mixed up, the Van Dyke Brown with white in it, we're going to get some of uh, that over the top there. Bleed through. Just sort of scratch through this. Wipe your brush, I mean, wipe your knife. Get some more of that. Now what we need to do is to get all this kind of horizontal, like it's a, a slab of rock in its natural form there. There we go. This top bit's been a bit of a bugger because I want to have a bit of greenery above there. There we go. Beautiful. Play with it, feel where it needs more. That's it. All right, now we might put a little bit of... Would yellow oxide go in there or not? Or is that too much? Yep, no, I don't want the yellow oxide in there. See, I was just trying it, but I'd rather get that out. If anything, I would rather have some highlighted white in it. A little bit of white. Not too much. Not too much. Just enough to get in there. And then we'll... Oh, we'll do it this way. Wipe the knife and spread it like butter through there. That's why it's just got different light and dark values in there. That'll do it. Now we're going to dry that again. Hey everybody, Yamaha. This is Tammy Sharp from USA. <laughs> Sorry about this, but I need to. I need a coffee. My son Reese is in here. He's going to watch one of his musician friends. He's in a gig today. He's a keyboard pianist. So I get to make myself a cup of coffee because it's a coffee break. And um, I'm having. I'm feeling good today. This painting that I'm doing, Rock Away, it's, it's coming out okay, so I want to be able to bleed my comfortableness and happiness with you probably out there, okay? So once I know I've got a coffee going, I feel a lot better. So let's come across back to here. Now, I've dried this. The kettle's on, that's what you can hear. We're going to have a cup of tea and no coffee in a minute. Yay, I love the cuppers. Now, I've dried this, so now we go for my th three favourite green colours. Forest green, sap green and yellow green, okay? So I'll find them, where are they? I've bought some colours everywhere. Where's my forest green? Where is everything? Ah, here we go. So, because these have got to be watered down a little bit to flow off your brush, to, if they're really thick and pasty, they don't come off your brush this easy. So, the Australian sap green I bought, that's a flow paint. It's a lot more softer and it doesn't take much to come off your brush. Where if it's a structured paint, that's thick and gluggy, okay? That's good for doing knife work. Okay, so I'm going to use my sap green and forest green. I've got my forest green and I also want yellow green, okay? So there's my three greens. Whoops, that kettle's ready to pop. Okay, down here I have my forest green, my sap green and my yellow green. So we've got 
dark, virtually medium and light. They're the three colours I like to use. Now we've got some shrubbery here. We're going to have some ground cover coming over the rock and some in front where the tree's going to be. So now this is where you work out, okay, I want to do these shrubs first and bring the ground cover to it. So I'm going to use that same brush that I used for the shrubbery and let's get a bit closer and we want to get the green on there but leaving some shadow underneath. Look at that green, it's a beautiful colour. And get this one here. Go over the black. That one's in front there a bit, okay? I'll do this other side here. And we'll do this one in front of it as well. Leaving some shadows to indicate what's behind and what's in front, okay? Now there me shrubs. Now while I've got the yellow green going, I'm using a flatter two inch brush, not a two inch brush, a chisel brush. And this is going to be my ground cover, the darker values of the ground cover. Don't kill all the blacks, go over the green a little bit, I mean over the black a little bit, come into our rock. And where, you, where you're coming into this shrub here, leave a bit of dark under there, okay? We'll come over to the so you're leaving some dark under those shrubs, just like that. Get some more paint on there. And this is the first colour of our ground cover we'll be putting on there. I've done this in many other videos with these three colours. Now I've just gone for my bigger brush to get them in a bit more quicker. I'm leaving black underneath those shrubs over here. So we're going to do the yellow. We're going to do the forest green, which is the darker out of the three. Then we'll lighten it up a bit with some sap green, Australian sap green. All right, we can probably bring some into that rock. Just, you don't want the rock just bare, you want it sort of looking naturally. There we go. Now we're gonna clean this brush and load him up again. So I'm using my shrub brush and my land cover scenery brush. We're gonna clean those two up. Now those brushes are clean, I'm picking up the sap green on my shrubbery brush. And now we're going to put this over the shrub like so. Now this has been dried, okay? That way it's not going to mud up. We've got another shrub here. And this way you're able to show what shape things are and what's in front and behind of everything. We're doing some little shrubs here. Come on. So we've got that forest green creating the darker values of our shrub. And the sap green is the actual colour of the shrub in my eyes. There we go. Then we'll grab the other brush and we'll put the ground cover on. So we're doing the same thing, try not to overdo it. A bit some paint on the brush here, yeah. looks like it's barely coming off the brush. Bring it into here, keeping it, this is going to shape the lay of your land. Now we've got our ground cover on there the way we need it. Um, bits of this prior to now might have been a bit missing because I thought I was filming but the files were full. So it's not too much to lose but if you've noticed that we've lost a bit that's why. So I've placed on the forest green, the sap green 
and the yellow green, okay, to get our couple of shrubs and ground cover over that rock area. Now what we're gonna do is put a tree, like the display, or like the reference picture has. So we'll put a tree there. So we'll start the tree off with good old black. So we'll find a black. I've got black down here. I'll get some black. I'll get some water in it as well so it'll come flow off my brush a lot easier. So I'm just picking up a, a flathead brush and we'll probably come up about here all the way to the top of the picture, okay? All right, so we'll load up the brush some more. And we'll get the main trunk in, keeping the edges reasonably sharp as we go down to the bottom. Keep it nice and sharp there. Come a bit wider at the bottom there. There we go. And a bit wider here. Now we've got our trunk in. We might put a main branch out here like they've got. Just something like so. And one on the other side somewhere. Somewhere about here, not too long. And one at the top somewhere, or some at the top. So we'll get some sort of here. One coming right out. Something like that. We'll get some over here. Now I'm putting out the forks for all these branches, okay? Now we're going to go, before we put any cover onto this tree, that's our basis for the tree. I want to highlight the tree. Because in the picture, they've got some distinctive highlights on the side of that tree, okay? Now I've just stippled the Van Dyke Brown onto my knife. We'll come over to our tree here, just on this side. And we'll find the side that we want to highlight. We'll just do it in broken pieces, all the way up the side there. Just like so. Get a bit more on the edge of that knife there. Just so we can sort of come around the tree a bit. Probably a bit in here. Now I'm going to wipe that brush and grab the Van Dyke Brown with some white in it, just a little bit of white. And then we'll come across some more. Just break up that Bandike brown in the tree there. Bit more there, it's a bit marbly, but that's fine. That's how we want it. All the way up there. And we'll get a bit in here. Maybe a bit along there. And a bit in there. Uh, 
Okay, that that there's a bit light, so I'm going to pick up the bandite brown again, just the bandite brown on the edge of my knife. And we'll close some of that up, that's it. Get rid of some of that. There we go. Now I'm going to dry that. Okay, I'm using this brush here I like to use for some foliage. I'm getting just the forest green. I'll get that out of the way. We don't want it too gluggy, so I'll get it over here now and thin it out a bit. Now we want to do some stuff on the tree over there. This is the dark values in the tree. Get some up here. And the very top bit over here, so we'll get all this done. Bring it down over those branches there. Be able to see some sky through it. We don't want to clog it up too much. Now I'm going to wash this brush. All right, I've got my script liner and I've mixed up some Vandyke brown with some white. Now we've put the forest green here. Now what we want to do is create some branches amongst in there, lots of twiggy little branches and stuff. And these will sort of get sunk back with the next colour of green, okay? Just twist your brush. We'll get some down here. Coming up into those greens there. So at the moment it's 2D and we'll end up converting it to 3D. There's a lot of branches here. There's a heap up here. Just get them on any way you can, so long as they're reasonably sharp. There's a lot down below as well. And then we'll dry this again. Now I have my sap green and yellow green mixed together and now I want to highlight this and sink those branches back into the shrubs there. Do it in layers so it's sort of like the way it would be on a tree. Just sort of sink them back. Just like so. So we've got some sort of branches in the middle of that tree there, okay? Now I'm looking at it, I want a bit more sap green because it's a bit on the bright side. Don't want it too bright. So let's sink some of that yellow green back. Just so it's not too loud. And we've got those branches going through it. We've got some darker values in there. How's that looking? That's a bit better. And what I will do, just to finish those branches off in the middle, you can get your liner brush and highlight them. Now down this bottom part of the tree here, I just want to sink him back into there. A little bit there and a little bit of yellow green to highlight it maybe just so it's putting that in front just something like that 
Okay, we'll just highlight some of these very minimal. Just to get some little highlights on them. Sometimes I like to stick the white bits out of the foliage there. Just like so. Get some happening down here. I could have dried this first, but I didn't. I should have. That's a good thing about acrylics. Like I said, you can dry each layer and nothing gets contaminated. Put a few highlights in here. And over here. Just the hint of them. Some sticking out. There we go. All right, I might just sign this and we'll whack a frame on it, okay? Okay, let's go and put a frame on this and see how she looks. There you go, that's not too shabby, eh? All right, hope you like that little exercise. We'll give this a name as, as it says on the coaster there. We'll call this Rockaway. All right, please subscribe and like my videos and follow me on Facebook. Search Ian Atlas on Facebook and you can keep in regular contact with me. All the best to everybody. Goodbye, good luck and good on ya.